What's up everybody? It's Dr. Jordan Taylor, undergraduate exercise science program director and associate teaching professor at the University of Kansas. Welcome to another episode of Fitness Facts. Today I will be discussing omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids, why it is essential to consume them, and their physiological effects. I will also explain why it is important for your overall health to increase your dietary intake of omega-3 fatty acids by consuming certain foods and or supplementing with fish oil. The human body needs fatty acids to prevent deficiencies and to function properly. Our body can produce all but two of them, linoleic acid, which is an 18-carbon omega-6 fatty acid, and linolenic acid, which is an 18-carbon omega-3 fatty acid. Cells within the human body do not contain the enzymes to synthesize any of the omega-6 or omega-3 fatty acids from scratch, so these two fatty acids must be supplied by the diet, and for this reason, they are considered essential fatty acids. Omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids are both categorized as polyunsaturated fatty acids because they contain two or more carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds in their structures. A polyunsaturated fatty acid with its closest double bond three carbons away from the methyl end is an omega-3 fatty acid. In contrast, a polyunsaturated fatty acid with its closest double bond six carbons away from the methyl end is an omega-6 fatty acid. Which foods are high in omega-6 fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids? Omega-6 fatty acids are found in most vegetable oils, corn oil, cottonseed oil, safflower oil, snack foods, and meats. Omega-3 fatty acids are found in certain fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, sardines, and herring. Significant amounts of omega-3 fatty acids are also in oysters, walnuts, and in various seeds such as flax seed and chia seeds. Western populations such as Americans, Britons, and Australians vastly overconsume omega-6 fatty acids while under-consuming omega-3 fatty acids. Consumption of omega-6 fatty acids has dramatically increased over recent years in Western countries due to the widespread use of refined vegetable oils and their addition to processed snacks and fast foods. While many sources of omega-6 fatty acids are healthy, this large increase in consumption has been linked to health problems, including an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, inflammatory, and autoimmune diseases. What appears to be the problem is that the ratio of omega-6 fatty acids to omega-3 fatty acids in Western diets has become too high. Thus, for some people, increasing consumption of omega-3 fatty acids and limiting omega-6 fatty acid intake, especially from unhealthy processed food sources, can be beneficial for overall health. In general, the omega-6 fatty acids have a pro-inflammatory effect and the omega-3 fatty acids have an anti-inflammatory effect. This is important to note because many conditions and diseases within the body have an inflammatory component associated with them. One such example being atherosclerosis, which is characterized by the development of fatty plaques on the inner walls of the arteries and is the main cause of cardiovascular disease, including heart attack, heart failure, stroke, and claudication. The omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids consumed in the diet can be built into longer physiologically important fatty acids that become part of cell membranes and form eicosanoids. Eicosanoids that are derived from these fatty acids act as signaling molecules in the body and play key roles in inflammation, immune response, regulating cell growth, blood pressure, blood flow, blood clotting, and many other bodily functions. Icosanoids derived from omega-3 fatty acids differ from those that are derived from omega-6 fatty acids, with the omega-3 family providing greater health benefits. The omega-3 derived icosanoids help decrease blood pressure, prevent blood clot formation, protect against irregular heartbeats known as arrhythmias, and reduce inflammation, whereas the omega-6 icosanoids tend to promote clot formation, inflammation, and blood vessel constriction. Since I explained the difference between the omega-6 and omega-3 families, I want to shift the focus now to just the omega-3 fatty acid family. Remember, I mentioned previously that linolenic 
acid is an essential 18 carbon omega-3 fatty acid that we must consume in our diet since it cannot be synthesized within the body. Our body can use linolenic acid to make small amounts of the longer 20 and 22 carbon members of the omega-3 family. Icosapentaenoic acid, known as EPA, and docosahexaenoic acid, known as DHA. EPA and DHA play critical roles in the optimal structure and function of the trillions of cells in the human body. These omega-3 fatty acids are found abundantly in the eyes and brain, and they are essential for normal growth, visual acuity, and cognitive development. Proper fetal development of the brain and retina is promoted in pregnant women consuming adequate amounts of EPA and DHA. DHA is the more important of the two for proper cell membrane function and is vital to the development of the fetal brain and retina. During the third trimester, large amounts of DHA accumulate in fetal tissue. The two most infiltrated fetal areas include the retina and brain, which may correlate with normal eyesight and brain function. Research investigating the health benefits of EPA and DHA is ongoing, but there is evidence to suggest that these omega-3 fatty acids have positive effects on human health in many ways, including lowering the risk of Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and other cognitive function disorders, improving the health of babies and slightly increasing birth weight, improving moods, attention, and mental focus, promoting joint health, helping maintain muscle mass in older adults, supporting immune function, supporting a healthy respiratory system, reducing the risk of age-related macular degeneration, which causes vision loss, and reducing the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. These omega-3 fatty acids may also play an important role in the prevention and treatment of heart disease. A low intake of dietary EPA and DHA is thought to be associated with increased inflammatory processes as well as poor fetal development, general cardiovascular health, and the risk of the development of Alzheimer's disease. Decades of research has confirmed that omega-3 fatty acids help protect against heart disease by reducing blood triglycerides, blood pressure, resting heart rate, inflammation, stabilizing plaque, and serving as precursors for eicosanoids. For people with high blood pressure or atherosclerosis, these effects can be life-saving. Because increasing omega-3 fatty acids in the diet supports heart health and lowers the rate of deaths from heart disease, the American Heart Association recommends including fish in a heart-healthy diet. Unfortunately, numerous surveys indicate populations that do not consume a lot of seafood, such as in the United States, don't get sufficient amounts of the omega-3 fatty acids EPA and DHA from their diet. Since plant foods don't supply them, the main dietary sources of EPA and DHA are cold water fatty fish and dietary supplements. The World Health Organization and American Heart Association recommend that adults consume at least eight ounces of seafood per week, but the majority of Americans are not coming close to that recommendation. New findings show that to achieve a desirable amount of EPA and DHA in your cell membranes, these long-held dietary recommendations might fall short and that instead, three fish meals per week plus additional fish oil supplementation daily might be the most beneficial. People who eat some fish each week can lower their risk of heart attack and stroke. And fish is the, most, is the best source of EPA and DHA in the diet, but it is also a source of mercury, which is an environmental contaminant. Most fish contain trace amounts of mercury, but some have especially high levels. For this reason, the FDA advises pregnant and lactating women, women of childbearing age who may become pregnant, and young children to include fish in their diets, but to avoid golden snapper, golden bass, swordfish, king mackerel, marlin, and shark. These individuals are also advised to limit average weekly consumption of a variety of ocean fish and shellfish to 12 ounces, cooked or canned, and white albacore tuna to six ounces, cooked or canned. Commonly eaten seafood relatively low in mercury include shrimp, catfish, salmon, and canned light tuna. Considering the widespread contamination of seafood by mercury and other toxins, many experts advise that taking a purified fish oil supplement could be a smart choice. 
Omega-3 fatty acids such as EPA and DHA are available in capsules of fish oil supplements. Consuming fish oil supplements daily may be beneficial for those individuals who do not consume at least eight ounces of fatty cold water fish per week, or for those who are worried about mercury levels in certain fish that I previously discussed. People with heart disease may also benefit from doses greater than what could be achieved from food alone. So you may be wondering at this point, how much fish oil should I consume each day for health benefits? Well, researchers have found it difficult to find an optimal amount of omega-3 fatty acids to consume per day, and there currently is no official recommended daily allowance for EPA and DHA. The American Heart Association recommends that adults take an omega-3 fatty acid fish oil supplement containing between 500 and 1,000 milligrams of combined EPA and DHA per day. However, other countries and different organizations recommend different doses. For people with high triglycerides, the American Heart Association recommends a dose of 4,000 milligrams per day. Studies suggest that doses of omega-3 ranging from 200 to 2,200 milligrams per day can reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety. In cases of mood and mental disorders, a supplement with higher amounts of EPA is more likely to have a beneficial effect than one with higher DHA. The FDA and the European Food Safety Authority claim that omega-3 supplements containing EPA and DHA are safe if doses don't exceed 5,000 milligrams per day. These cautions are in place for several reasons. For one, omega-3 fatty acids can cause blood thinning due to their ability to reduce platelet aggregation, and this may lead to excessive bleeding in some people. For this reason, many organizations encourage people who are planning surgery to stop taking omega-3 supplements one to two weeks beforehand. Taking more than 5,000 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids per day has never been shown to provide any added benefits, so the risk is not worth taking. High intakes of omega-3 fatty acids above 5,000 milligrams may not only increase bleeding time, but interfere with wound healing, raise LDL cholesterol, and suppress immune function. This is why it's important to remember that too much of a good thing can sometimes be harmful. Overall, fish oil supplements are safe when taken as recommended. The European Food Safety Authority contends supplemental intakes of up to 5,000 milligrams per day are generally well tolerated and do not increase the risks of adverse health complications. Bottom line is, taking up to 5,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA per day appears to be safe for adults over 18 years of age. Healthy adolescents ages 13 to 18 can safely consume up to 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams each day, and for healthy children ages 4 to 12, up to 2,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA can be consumed daily. So when is the best time to take a fish oil supplement? Well, there is no significant benefit to consuming fish oil at a specific time of day. However, there is evidence suggesting that taking omega-3 fish oil supplements with a meal that contains fat can increase absorption and bioavailability. Therefore, people may wish to take fish oil at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. However, there is no correct or incorrect time to take it. Some experts advise dividing your doses throughout the day and avoiding larger amounts of fish oil before bed, especially if you suffer from acid reflux. Before taking a fish oil supplement, note that it can interact with blood thinners, blood pressure medication, and chemotherapy. Therefore, it's important to consult a healthcare professional if you are on these medications. Please remember to speak with your physician before taking fish oils or any other supplement. So I wanna take this time to just kind of talk about uh, a fish oil supplement that I take. I mean, there's, there's many good ones that are out there. Um, this one is, is Nordic Naturals. It's um, been purity tested by a third party. You always wanna look on your fish oil supplement and uh, make sure it's had some sort of third third party testing to make sure you know there's no PCBs in there. There's um, um, you know you're you're getting um, uh, a pure product, um, and so <clears throat> um, some other good brands. This is Nordic Naturals, um, but I know Thorn is a good brand. I think Dr. Andrew Huberman out at uh, University of Stanford takes that, and then Carlson's 
is another good brand. I think uh, Dr. Peter Atia, uh, medical doctor, he he takes that brand. Um, so those are some good brands. Uh, Thorne and Carlson's are both, um, again, third party tested um, and, and pure quality fish oils. Um, so my fish oil that I take here and, and some of these other ones too, um, it, it is higher in EPA if I look on the back. So two of these soft gels, right? Um, you know, just dump them out here. So two of these soft gels is, is a serving. Um, and I do like these because they also have like a lemon taste to them. So some people, when they consume fish oil, they may notice they get like the fish oil burps and it's kind of gives bad breath and it's fishy taste, but these don't for me. So they do have that kind of lemony taste and uh, they're easy to swallow, I feel. And uh, the um, basically these are purified, the oil in here from anchovies and sardines. So deep, deep sea fish, right? And there is in these two soft gels, uh, 650 milligrams of EPA and 400 milligrams, 450 milligrams, I'm sorry, of DHA. So you see a little bit higher EPA than DHA. And I actually take um, two of these uh, in the morning um, and then two at, at dinner at night. So I get double that. So I actually get 1300 milligrams of EPA a day and um, then 900 milligrams of DHA a day. Um, and I know, you know, like I said, there's no like hard, fast guidelines on this, I know that um, typically um, if you can take, you know, two times the amount of EPA compared to DHA, um, that's believed to help with anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, so EPA tends to be more beneficial for anti-inflammation while DHA is more important for brain health and development. Um, so for example, I know um, I, I mentioned Dr. Huberman and Dr. Peter Atia. I know Peter Atia. Um, I believe he takes two grams, so that's 2,000 milligrams of EPA per day, and 1.5, which is 1.5 grams is 1,500 milligrams of DHA per day. Um, so if you're just kind of wondering what people are taking somewhere in that range, um, it's important to look on the International Fish Oil Standards website, so IFOS. You can go to that website and you can look for brands that have been tested for quality, purity, and safety. Like I mentioned, Thorne and Carlson's, I know they're on there. They're good fish oil brands as well. So um, I don't think I have too much more to add. Like I said, I, there's a lot of supplements out there that are, that are garbage and BS that I don't typically recommend. But uh, fish oils uh, tend to have, you know, fish oil supplementation has a lot of evidence behind it. And like I said, in, in Western countries, um, especially in the Midwest here in Kansas, uh, a, a lot of people, we don't have a lot of fresh fish around. <laughs> so, um, you know, supplementing with fish oils can help kind of bridge that gap if you're not eating enough, um, you know, fatty fish in your diet. So if you have questions for me about the KU Exercise Science Program, send an email to jtaylor at ku.edu or call 913-897-8516. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thanks for watching Fitness Facts.